Hi, everybody. Uh, today, I have the pleasure to have with us Rob Wilson. Rob is the Senior Vice President and General Manager in Codexis Performance Enzyme. So, hi, Rob. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to so, meet you. some short presentation of the company. So, Codexis is a leading protein engineering company applying innovative technologies to improve health. Its three major focus areas are therapeutics, life science, and sustainable manufacturing. The company has discovered and developed many high-performing enzymes for improving manufacturing efficiency of pharmaceuticals, fine chemicals, and food ingredients, as well as novel enzymes as biotherapeutics for various disease uh, uh, targets, and the crucial components in monitoring biochemical pathways or enabling biochemical reaction for life science. So Rob, the first question for you. Can you shortly explain us what is a protein engineering? I will try. Um, I think, I mean, a lot of times people refer to it as directed evolution and I think it's it's useful to start with what is evolution even in the natural world and basically what happens in nature is genes which code for everything that make up the world um, you know organically um, get mutated over time and as those mutations accumulate if they're positive then you end up with you know organisms that are better suited to whatever environment they're evolving in and whatever evolutionary pressure they're they're under but that takes you know often thousands of generations and you know sometimes millions of years to to achieve the outcome what what we're doing in protein engineering and directed evolution is trying to sort of massively accelerate that process but fundamentally it's the same it's try to accumulate positive mutations for a particular outcome um, and and the way we do that is by mutating the genes that code for protein expression for making enzymes and proteins um, and and very rapidly accumulating beneficial mutations for whatever it is we're trying to make the enzyme do whether it's to be stable in the gut to treat a, a disease or whether it's to be able to convert a particular chemical substrate into a different chemical substrate we basically apply an, an assay and a screen to 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 many many you know thousands and thousands of, of variants of, of particular enzyme pick up any genetic mutations that, that code for a, a protein or an enzyme that's more effective and, and carry those forward in a kind of very rapid version of the natural evolutionary approach um, to, to, to do in you know, less than a year what takes nature sometimes millions of years. Oh yeah, I can imagine. So a lot of work, a lot of data. <laughs> yes, That's so indeed. important today. Just uh, we heard about the Nobel Prizes, so we are so happy that the technology and the science is moving so fast. So thanks a lot for your work. So the second question for you, how is your proprietary technology different than other companies' approaches to protein engineering? Can you tell us? Briefly, yeah, I think I mean the, one of the critical differentiators is speed. You know, there's there's a lot of approaches, and you know, everybody follows versions of the same kind of philosophy, like I just outlined. Um, but I think with with Code Evolver, the platform that we've developed over the last couple of decades, um, it's a combination of of integration of a number of different functions in a really kind of um, synergistic way, um, and the ability to move forward with those positive mutations very rapidly driven by you know really expert screening approaches and um informatic approaches on the sort of machine learning and increasingly um artificial intelligence side to really make sure that you're mining the data as you said effectively yeah. for, for all of the positive mutations that you can carry forward in the workflow Good. So what you already you explain is something related to the other question. But anyway, I put you in any case. How can machine learning and artificial intelligence help you speed up the screening process and get to the desired outcome faster? Yeah, good question. I mean, I think I've heard a lot of people analogize, you know, needles in haystacks and, and things like that. 
Um, I think the way I, I think about um, our, our technology platform and, and how machine learning can help you is actually almost more like kind of climbing a mountain in the fog. You know, you don't know exactly where you're going. You kind of want to keep going upwards, but you can't see which way is up. And what the, the sort of informatic side of the technology and the machine learning side of the technology kind of allows you to do is, is almost like sonar pings in loads of different directions um, to, to make sure that you are kind of still climbing the mountain. Um, and not only that, that you're climbing the right mountain. You know, you are climbing yeah, the peak that, the that right gets you the highest. <laughs> Um, and so the, the informatic approaches and, and the ability to mine data in multiple different kind of scenarios just just gives you that confidence that you are on the right path and, and that you can really progress quickly, knowing that even if I did, you know, start walking down a valley instead of keep climbing, I, I can stop and, you know, change course very rapidly to, to get back back on the trajectory we need to be. Thanks. So again, about our capability of Codexis. So what are the key achievements Codexis has delivered in therapeutics and life science areas related to human health? You know, we're, we're super excited that we get to apply our technology in, in sort of real, you know, difference making areas. And so over the last five or so years, we've really been focused on as you said, life sciences, diagnostics, and, and therapeutics. Um, very proud of, of you know, our first clinical trial effort in, in um, phenylketonuria. Uh, I, was, I was closely associated with that program and was very happy to, to, to be so. Uh, that, that phenylketonuria is a disease that, that relates to not being able to process phenylalanine, a, a critical amino acid that you know, we all need to be healthy, but we, too much of it can make you very unhealthy and so we we developed an enzyme um, that could operate in the gi tract in the gut which has evolved over millions and millions of years to be really good at destroying enzymes and breaking them down we evolved an enzyme to basically be resistant to the proteases in the gut and to the, the acid in the stomach so that it could survive in the gi tract you know along with food and take out um phenylalanine this critical amino acid that can accumulate in these patients um, and um, you know so that's one example where our technology can make an enzyme do something it, it really shouldn't be able to do naturally um, and, and and give it attributes that, that are truly beneficial kind of therapeutically um, on the on the diagnostic life science side um, you know we're we're in the process of commercializing a, a suite of enzymes a couple a couple of examples um in the in the ngs workflow next generation sequencing workflow there are a number of enzymes required to <clears throat> you know stitch tags onto dna that would be a ligase to polymerize the dna so you can read it and, and look for you know cancer markers and so on um but th those natural enzymes have evolved you know, inside cells in in nature under conditions that are not all that similar to the you know, test tubes and micro well plates that the screening workflows are going on in. So you have to apply different pressure to to make sure that you're getting what you want out of the NGS workflow. You're not losing sequences that might be really important to, to screen for. And so our, our sort of ligase and polymerase um, enzymes are, are really improved over the natural variants to, to make sure that everything gets a tag so you can read it in the workflow or nearly everything gets a tag so you can read it in the workflow and that, that there's no kind of inherent bias in the way that the, the polymerization is happening so that every sequence that's in the sample in the blood sample for example does get read um, and that's very important for the sort of specificity uh, of, a, of a diagnostic test and, and it improves the chances of finding you know some some bad actor in that sample that that is being looked for. Oh, good. Thank you. So now I come to the last question. Uh, unfortunately, we have a time limit, but anyway, yeah. so we speak about sustainability. So, and how does your technology help industrial companies in regard of sustainability? So important today. Yeah, yeah I think there's a couple of areas. I mean, the, the, the one on which basically our company is founded is, is improving the efficiency of manufacturing. You know, we've, we've been making 
helping companies make um, pharmaceuticals for a long time more efficiently, more effectively. So higher throughput, you know, higher concentration reactions. One of the problems with natural enzymes is they often prefer very dilute, you know, water solutions. And, and mm. what we're able to do is make them tolerate higher temperatures, much more concentrated solutions. Um, and all that means you reduce manufacturing footprint, you reduce waste. So that's that's one critical piece. Um, but we're increasingly focusing on you know, on the other end of things. So if waste is being generated, what can we do with it? Can we help to degrade it? Or can we even, I think the word is valorize it, you know, take a waste stream and do something to it that makes it actually a valuable commodity. And so a number of the sort of programs we're working, you know, on ourselves and with partners um, are in that kind of mode <clears throat> in, in terms of really addressing you know, the fundamental problem of the planet, which is we're making too much mess and we need to clean it up. That's a long story. <laughs> anyway, so thank you very much, Rob. You've been very nice, very exhaustive. You gave us a lot of interesting information in the right time. So congratulations. Thank you very much. So yeah. stay well. I hope that everything is going well in this very difficult time, very difficult for everybody. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Yep.